All right, conquistadors. Uh, real quick overview of who these guys were and what they did, uh, where they came from, uh, where they went, that kind of thing. Um, for this assignment or for this week's assignment, you'll be doing biographies on your own on five different conquistadors that came through Florida. Um, so I'll show you kind of what I want uh, in one conquistador who didn't come through Florida, one you won't be researching yourself. Uh, but here we go. So conquistador, it just means conquerors, right? Spanish and Portuguese language itself. They were explorers. They went through the Pacific as well as the, the Atlantic, North and South America, uh, as well in, into Asia. Remember Magellan, he claimed the Philippines. Portuguese went the other way, came around the other way around Africa, India, and then up into the Spice Islands in, um, in, in uh, Indonesia. Um, Spanish conquistadors, they also explored uh, the North American interior. And that's one of the ones I'll go over. He didn't come through Florida, so you guys won't be researching yourselves, uh, but I'll, I'll go over it for you. They were professional warriors. They came out of the noble class. Um, some of them born into nobility. Some of them had been knighted. Uh, remember the knights, it wasn't a hereditary nobility, but it was, it was conferred upon them by the king. Uh, they used old, old world tactics, cavalry, short sword. Uh, looks like in the picture here, um, you know, they, they'd use dogs. Uh, looks like some pikes, some halberds. I'm, I'm not an expert in medieval weapons, um, but their main, main weaponry was, was the cavalry, horseback mounted, as well as a short sword. Um, they used some infantry, some of the infantry that came from peasants. The peasant class, there wasn't a lot of social mobility back in those days. And the peasant class, in order to move up, they had to do something distinguishing. Uh, and and one, of that, one of those ways was to come over with the conquistadors, go on their military uh, expeditions with them, and uh, bring themselves up, fortune and glory, so to speak. Um, they, they could rise above. They could, they could gain class. They could uh, gain land, gain wealth, gain acceptance into the upper class. Uh, some of the other people we saw this picture here, backing up just a slide. Uh, this is Cortez, and these are his Na Native American allies as they marched on Tenochtitlan uh, or Mexico City to conquer the Aztecs. Remember the uh, the Spanish they only had a few hundred people in order to co conquer a million strong Aztec nations or Aztec alliance. It was, it was a triple alliance. Uh, in order to conquer them, they needed allies on the ground and uh, they were very able to do that. Um, Pizarro did something similar with the Incas. Remember the Incas were in a civil war and then Pizarro, he gobbled up allies along the way uh, in search of, of the faction, the war faction uh, brothers. Um, so they had Native American allies that, that uh, worked in the infantry as well, they usually, those usually came from the warrior class, from the natives. They also had, had uh, African allies. Uh, some of them came over as slaves, some of them came over uh, as freemen themselves um, to be serving in the infantry. They usually had uh, their own native military ways. Um, a, lot of, a lot of the slaves that came over were uh, from Africa were military captures. Um, so it would be a, a war capture where, where they would capture another warring tribe and then sell them on the slave coast to Portuguese or Spanish slavers. Um, and then they would come over, they could earn their freedom. Uh, one of the ways to earn their freedom was to fight uh, in, in these wars of conquest with the Spanish. One of the, one of the conquistadors you'll research uh, this week is is an African conquistador. He was able to earn his freedom and then he went on his own adventures as well. Uh, some of the conquistadors here, Balboa, we talked about. He found the uh, Pacific or he was the first European to see the Pacific, first European to jump in the Pacific. Um, he came down here into the D Darien Gap. Um, by the time he came down here in 1513, you know, just 20 years after Columbus, this whole coast 
was littered with Spanish. There wasn't a port in there where that they could uh, they could land without coming into a Spanish colony. So he decided to see what was on the other side. Um, Panama City was founded six years later, and uh, by the time of Pizarro, there was a full blown uh, shipyard shipbuilding industry on that site as well, going up and down the coast exploring. Cortez, of course, we talked about him. He came up and through here. DeSoto, Fort DeSoto is just right up the street, right? Uh, he came up here, met the Mississippian culture or the mound builders. Um, bounce around through there. Uh, and then his expedition came down this way. Uh, Coronado, the guy we're going to talk about here, he came up through here through the southwest and then eventually made his way up into Kansas uh, and then came back down. It was a big expedition on the explorer side, opened up a lot of detail uh, on, the, on the get rich scheme. Uh, it was a complete failure, but we'll talk about him here in a minute. And this kind of comes out a little goofy, so we're gonna switch over to this side. All right, so this is Francisco Coronado. Uh, he was born into a noble family in Spain, and when he was about 25, he traveled to New Spain. Um, remember with these biographies, we're looking back, this is 500 years ago, right? So they, there's not much that is known about these guys' early lives. Um, they, did, they weren't the best record keepers back then. Uh, most of their early life is, is legend. Uh, they kind of wrote about themselves afterwards, so not much is going to be known. But when, when you're going through these biographies, do your best. Uh, he traveled to New Spain, which was Mexico. He married there. It was a political marriage. Um, he married the governor's daughter uh, in order to gain land and gain wealth. One of the articles you'll read talks about that system of how they gain land and wealth. Uh, he ended up having eight children in Mexico. Um, so he, he traveled over here for keeps. He traveled into the new, new world, into the new Spain for, for keeps. He was staying. Uh, in 1540, he started on his expedition. What this became is a, what they call the El Camino uh, Real, which is the Royal Road. It became a major uh, shipping road. It was already a trade road between you know, the Aztecs and the Southwest Indians, the Hopkins, the Pueblos, those kind of guys. Uh, so it was already a, a trade road, what used to be called Indian roads. Um, traveled up there, conquered Cibola, which was one of the main tribes up here. Explored the Arkansas River. Uh, he reached Kansas. So from Mexico, he went all the way up into the Plain States, up into Kansas. Met all kinds of different uh, tribes along the way, the Apache. Uh, if you guys know anything about the Apache, they were completely unimpressed by uh, Cortez. Uh, barely greeted him. Um, pretty much ignored him as he came through. Let's get down here. So this all started off, he kicked off his expedition. He was searching for the Seven Cities of Gold. Seven Cities of Gold was a legend. It's an old world legend. Um, but it was kind of fueled by uh, fantastic tales of natives. Um, so they, he discovered a Grand Canyon. Um, that's kind of neat. He sent an expedition up the Colorado River. And also he, he himself went up the Arkansas River. Um, those split on the Rockies so that the expedition he sent up along the Colorado River, he was supposed to meet up with not knowing that it's called the Continental Divide and the Arkansas River never actually meets the Colorado River in their headwaters anywhere. Um, he had a uh, native guide that he called the Turk. This guy just took him on a just wild goose chase. Um, he kept saying, yeah, just over the ridge, just over the ridge are these seven cities of gold. Uh, and it, over every single ridge, nothing. Uh, the conquering of Cibola, that was supposed to be, you know, that, that was the big legendary myth. Uh, the, these Indians or the, the natives that lived in the Southwest region, they built these houses called Pueblos. Pueblo, they were adobe. 
so it's, it's wood and uh, mud. In this region, there's some of them had mud bricks, some of them used stone. But in this region, there's a lot of mica, which kind of glimmered. It shined, it glinted in the sun uh, when the sun shone on it. And it made them from a distance as the sun was setting in a distance, it looked like the city made of gold. Uh, so every time they got close and they would see the shining city on the hill, uh, shining of gold, they would think they were there and only to find um, some, of, some of these Pueblos, some of these Pueblo cities, they've been abandoned for generations. Uh, but this guy, Turk, he just kept taking them other places and other places and other places, just stringing them along. Uh, Cibola, the conquering of Cibola, they were actually pretty close to starvation when they stumbled upon the, the city of Cibola. Uh, they requested sanctuary, they were denied, so they just rushed the place and took it over. Um, by the time he got up into Kansas, he really he, he realized he was on a wild goose chase and then came around, turned around, came back. Uh, so anyway, that's Cor Coronado. He didn't come to Florida, so you guys aren't going to research him. But that's the basic format of how I want these biographies to go. You don't have to add as many pictures. You can add more facts if you find them. Um, but otherwise, it's pretty much what I want them to do. All right, if you have any comments, go ahead and leave it below.